Good morning. Welcome back to another read aloud of Moo. We've got a couple of dogs that look like they're sleeping behind me. We've got my camping mug for coffee. Mm, makes me feel like I'm outside by a campfire. All right, let's dive back into the story. Let's see what a day off might look like. A day off. We took a day off from going to Mrs. Falala's and rode our bikes all around town. The sun was sparkling off the water and the boats in the harbor. The people were strolling along with their kids and their dogs, all lined up at the ice cream stands and the lobster roll shack. We stopped at one stand for the creamiest soft serve ice cream and got a cup of corn to feed the ducks in the river below. It was the perfect many kind of day. Up Chestnut Street, we rode up and down to the farm with the belted Galloways, where we leaned our bikes against the fence. The girl and boy I'd seen before, Beat and Zep, waved from the barn. Where you been? Beat called. Haven't seen you in a few days. She put down a bucket and walked up to where we were standing. Busy, helping an old lady. What old lady is that? Beat was wearing the same orange overalls and tall black boots I'd seen her in before. She had sparkly black eyes and a kind smile. Mrs. Falala. Beat clapped her hand to her mouth. Oh, really? Mrs. Falala? Yep, you know her? Well, everyone knows Mrs. Falala. Do you know her cow, Zora? Beat put her hand on my arm. Oh boy, do I know Zora. Hey, Zep, come here. Look who's up in Mrs. Falala and Zonky Zora. The tall red-headed boy, Zep, ambled up to the fence. He nodded at me and Luke. That right? Pardon? His main accent seemed stronger today. He spoke louder as if we were deaf. That right? You helping Mrs. Falala? Um, yes. Beat and Zep exchanged a look that maybe meant, are they crazy? Or maybe, can you believe that? Or maybe, poor kids. Beat said, and they're helping with Zora too. Whoa, Zora? Whoa. Now that's a stubborn one, that Zora. Yes, I said, we discovered that. Mrs. Falala wants us to show Zora at the fairs. Again, Beat and Zep exchanged a look. But I said, we don't know anything about cows or fairs, do we, Luke? Nope. Beat grinned. Well, we can help you with that, can't we, Zep? We know about cows and we know about fairs, don't we, Zep? Oh, uh, yep. Yeah. So just like that, we arranged that Luke and I would come to the farm for a couple of hours each of the days we did not go to Mrs. Falala's. We'll train you, Beat said. Oh, uh, yep. Yeah. Zep agreed. Train you right up. Train you right up. <laughs> the outfits. One morning when we arrived at Mrs. Falala's, she said, in barn, go see now. She flicked her hands at us, shooting us toward the barn. There we found farm clothing intended for us, sturdy campus overalls, long sleeved denim shirts, tall black rubber boots, and thick suede work clothes. He's not new, Mrs. Falala said as if to let us know she would never consider something so extravagant. But he's good. Maybe a little big. But okay, he's good. Try, it. see. If, a few months ago, anyone had asked either me or Luke to wear these items, we would have refused. But now, Luke said, hey, just like Zepp and Beat at the farm. I was thinking the same thing. Mrs. Falala pulled on her braid. Better to wear those when doing the work, yes? The work gets messy. Yes, we'd noticed that. And so had our parents, who said we were extremely stinky lately. They made us change in the garage before even coming inside and said our shoes were foul. But now we had real farm gear. It felt good, but we tried not to show how good, because we were a bit suspicious that Mrs. Falala had done something nice like that. She told us that we should leave the clothes and boots in the barn at the end of each day. But maybe we could take them with us and bring them back, I asked. No. We could use them at the farm. What farm? Luke jumped in, rattling on about Beat and Zep and the Belties at Birchmeyer Farm, and then he pulled out his notebook and showed Mrs. Falala some of his drawings of the farm and the cows. Sit here, she said. Wait. She made her way back to the house. Uh-oh, I said. Did we make her mad? We were dis-suspect? That, that's a word? Disrespectful. We were that, Luke asked. Mrs. Falala emerged from the house carrying something pressed close to her chest. She sat on a hay bale beside Luke and tapped on his notebook. Show, she commanded. Show, show how. In her arms was a white tablet, which she placed on her lap. 
from a pocket, she withdrew a stubby pencil. So, maybe Mrs. Koala was not familiar with the word fleece. Hmm. Show what, Luke asked. That, she said, tapping on Luke's open notebook. How you do? Show me. Luke cradled his notebook against his chest. I, I don't. You draw. Show me too. Mrs. Koala had put her braid around the front and was chewing on the ends. She looked like a child sitting there on the hay bale. Hair in her mouth, her small feet crossed over the other. Show how you do. Luke uncapped his black marker and turned to a fresh page. He looked around, his gaze settling on the open barn door. Quickly, he sketched the outlines of the, bar the barn sides and roof, and then the door frame. Mrs. Falola bent her head close, her eyes moving from his hands to the paper, to the barn, and back again. Luke added a pig at the top of the barn, and a fierce eagle swooping down on the pig. I don't see that, Mrs. Falola said. Luke drew a braided dragon curling around the base of the barn. That's not here, Mrs. Falala said. I opened the gate to the pasture and went in search of Zora. She was not under her favorite bush this time, but in the shadows of another corner of the pasture, near a small pond, Zora was facing me, standing completely still. The only movement, the occasional swish of her tail, I approached her slowly. I talked softly. It's just me. I'm Rena, remember? I won't hurt you. It's okay. When I got within two feet of her, she spoke. No. No. Yes. Yes, I said. Look, I don't even have a halter. I'm just here to see you. No. I eased up beside her and carefully stroked her back. Her ears flicked this way and that. No. Zora, about four feet high and two feet wide and five feet long from end to end at Birchmire, a heifer that beat worked with weight. Oh. A heifer that Beat worked with weighed 800 pounds. Zora seemed only slightly smaller than that one. Zora's fur was deep black on her face, neck, shoulders, and forefeet. Around her middle was a foot-white belt of pure white fur, and behind was the deep black on her hindquarters, hind legs, and tail. I stroked her head and neck. I stroked her shoulders and back. I stood in front of her and looked. <laughs> You like my moves. Uh-huh. Yeah. A little side note. My wife's nickname used to be Baby Moo when I first met her. I stood in front of her and looked into first one big black eye and then the other. The eyes were so far apart it was hard to look into both of them at the same time. Zora's nostrils were, I believe I had mentioned, enormous and wet and drippy. And here she wrote the word. It looks like it's dripping down the page. I stood there for some time, talking to her and stroking her her head. And then I turned and walked away, saying, See, I didn't want anything from you. I only came to visit. I was halfway back to the barn when I turned to look behind me. And there was Zora, following me, about ten feet behind, big head swinging from side to side. I kept on walking as if this was nothing extra extraordinary, but inside I was bursting. Zora was following me. I was hoping Mrs. Falala would notice, but her head was still bent over Luke's notebook, watching him sketch. As I approached, she pointed at Luke's drawing and said, I don't see this, or this, or that. She squinted at Luke. Where this, where this comes from? Luke offered his marker to Mrs. Falala. You try. She clapped her hand to her chest. <gasps> no, no. Didn't you ever draw before? Mrs. Falala sat straight up. No, I do not draw. Never? Never. I couldn't imagine that. Never? How could a person live a whole life and never draw? Not a tree or a house or a stick figure or a cat or a dog or a flower. Nothing. Never. Moo. Moo. Zora was pressed up against the fence, her big nostrils poking between the slats. Well, well, Mrs. Koala said. Now you have new friend. Ooh. And the next chapter is called Setback. Oh. Ooh. Oh. I think we're going to wait until tomorrow to figure out what the setback is. Something happens. But what? I don't know. I do like where the story is going, though. It seems like Mrs. Falola, she comes off abrasive. Or almost she comes off like she might be mean. But I think she's just someone that gets straight to the point. 
but she seems very caring and kind. She's doing nice things like getting them better clothes for the work they're doing. But we'll see tomorrow. I hope you're enjoying your story.